The Ant Paradise Ica has always been for me the most favorite place for watching ants. Though several species of ants inhabit this beautiful ant paradise, it is the notorious Godzilla ants that reign supreme in these lands. But as I have already told you, the things are not going that well for the big black ants. The forest floor is full of the headless bodies and the decapitated heads of the Godzilla ants. Now, who may have decapitated the Godzilla ants? It is a mystery and I was so close to solving the mystery but then I got looted of my specimen by the Fedule ants. I had collected some other samples but all of them turned out to be empty and hollow. My only hope also turned out to be futile and in the end I was left with nothing but only with a collection of dozens of decapitated heads of the Godzilla ants. However, these heads looked old and hollow and so I had little hope of getting anything important from them. But the emergence of this wasp-like creature has shown me a ray of hope and I had preserved them in hope of getting some important clue from them in future. But even after a long wait, when nothing fruitful came out, I decided to visit Ant Paradisica again. There are some many types of flies and other insects. The Godzilla ants look disturbed particularly by the presence of some of them. But it was unlikely that these insects were behind the decapitation of the Godzilla ants. But then I noticed that there was one fly in particular which was trying now and then to come close to the Godzilla ants. The Godzilla ants looked extremely disturbed by the presence of these flies and they chased them away aggressively. Will these flies be behind the reason of the mass murder of the Godzilla ants? But a closer look revealed that these flies were more interested in some kind of sweet secretion from the bamboo plant which the Godzilla ants also released. So by chasing away the flies, the Godzilla ants were merely protecting their food. The next thing that I saw was this. Now this was getting exciting. This thing looked like the adult of the tiny wasps that we had seen earlier emerging out from the decapitated head of the Godzilla ant. My excitement rose to its zenith when I saw the wasps walking towards the ant. So was I going to witness the wasps laying its egg on the ant's body which will later on result in the beheading of the Godzilla ant? But my hopes were dashed when the wasps flew away at the mere contact of the ant. They were other flies too, but they were too quick and small to see. And my attempt to catch them only resulted in their death. And so I gave up the idea of catching them. Now though the presence of some of the creatures was providing much needed hope to solve the mystery behind the beheading of the Godzilla ants, Yet I never saw any one of them making an attempt to land on the body of the ant which was most required for them to lay egg on the body of the ant which will develop inside the ant's head and cause their beheading. Frustrated and tired, I was about to return home when I found this ant that looked seriously ill. Its antennae were missing and some kind of liquid was coming out from its antennal socket. This ant was definitely infected. Without wasting any time, I brought it home with me. Now I had thought that the head of the ant would fall soon and I will witness the act of beheading of the ant. But I was so wrong. I kept waiting but the head of the ant did not fall. But yes, it was obvious that the ant was suffering a lot. Just imagine how you will feel if someone was eating you alive from inside your head. I felt sorry for the ant but I knew I could do nothing. I waited for a long time. But when nothing happened, I just left the ant room, for I was to travel to a far away city in the next few hours. I returned home after a whole one week, and the first thing I did after returning home was to head to my ant room, and as I had expected, the head of the ant was by now decapitated. But what was concerning me a little was that some kind of fungus had grown on the dead body of the ant. Fearing that the specimen may have been damaged by this strange fungus, I hurriedly cracked open the skull of the ant, but to my utter horror, I found it empty. What had gone wrong out here? I was very disappointed. Just a moment before I was happy thinking that this mystery will at last be solved, but now again I was back to square one. Totally frustrated, I was just about to leave the place when I remembered the decapitated heads of the Godzilla ants. Maybe there was something positive in there for me. I don't know why I was being so hopeful. But to my horror, I saw these tiny little devils, the infamous pharaoh ants, running all over my specimen. Everything was being eaten, 
nothing had been spared. Even the tiny wasp-like creature had been killed mercilessly. It was too much for me. The pharaoh ants had always troubled me so much. And here they had ruined all my samples, killing and eating away anything that was in them. Still being an ant lover, I could not kill them. But I made a sure to drive each one of them away from my ant room. I stayed away from the ant room for about three weeks. But then my curiosity in this case won over my frustration. And I soon found myself walking towards Ant Paradisica once again. Luckily this time, I soon found an infected ant. But its antennae were still intact. I carefully collected the ant and hurriedly carried it back home with me. Back in the ant room, I was just preparing to store the infected ant when my eyes fell on the container containing the decapitated heads. And what I saw next was simply unbelievable. There among the decapitated heads of the Godzilla ants were lying not one but several dead bodies of the tiny wasps. And there was also lots and lots of mites moving around and perhaps feeding on the remains of the dead insects. And in the middle of all of this was lying a body of a dead fly. It was a forest fly. I was totally speechless. I had made a great mistake out here. I had just been so careless in leaving the container unchecked for so many days. It was wrong for me to assume that after the attack of the pharaoh ants, there was nothing worthy left in these specimens. It was now evident that by driving away the pharaoh ant, I had been able to save eggs or pupae of these insects that was lying all this time inside these decapitated heads. But alas, all of them were now dead because of me. I was feeling such a guilt and regret in my heart. Now in spite of all of what had happened, it was now clear that the beheading of the ants was work of either one of the two dead insects, the tiny wasps or the forded fly. Whichever of the two insects it may be, I did not want to take any chance and so with a heavy heart I decided to focus on the infected ant. By now the ant had lost its antennae and it was looking strange. And I also noticed a kind of strange cloudy spot on its eyes. In this case too, it took several hours for the head of the ant to fall off from its body. However, finally the head did fall off from the body of the ant. The jaws of the ants had fallen off too. This time I was extra careful in preserving the decapitated head. And after four weeks, I got the answer that I was so desperately seeking for. It was a furry fly. So all this while it was a furry fly which was causing the beheading of these ants. But why didn't I see them landing on the ants body? Maybe I missed them because of their small size. But what about the tiny wasps? Maybe they are parasitoid of furry fly larva. What do you think? Do leave your comments in the comment box below. But as far as the beheading of the Godzilla ant is concerned, it is now evident that it is being done by the furry flies. It was so sad to see such a huge number of deaths of the mighty Godzilla ants. It was so sad to see their tragic end. But just as I was blaming the forest flies entirely for the brutal murder of the Godzilla ants, I saw it. A more brutal and deadly killer of the Godzilla ants. Staring straight at me from the darkest corners of Ant Paradisica. And I just found myself saying, God save the Godzilla ants.